So yeah, I had a uh, a dream, and uh, the uh, first girl I ever dated, well maybe first girl I was ever seriously dating, but uh, it just kept recurring, occurring, recurring, recurring, like the last hour and a half I was sleeping, and uh, during that dream, I was also having a concurrent thought at the same time. Bizarro land. I'm not going to talk about the dream, but I'm going to talk about the kept the current recurring thought. I will say she and I were trying to get married but there was other people getting married at the same time so we all had to dress different or something like that I was trying to change some spark, spark plugs on my car before I went to the, to the wedding there was a car I couldn't get them changed and there was another car in the way that had to be moved and then I thought well I got we gotta call an Uber it was a childlike uh cartoon land type scenario you know how dreams are not even close to real life you know but it's on the concurrent thought process was I was at the on vacation I remembered uh, listening to uh, I was at the the lake listening to a sermon we were on a vacation visited a lake I walked and listened to a sermon I remember I was remembering about that sermon and the title of the sermon was No Man Careth for My Soul I don't know why these two things were going on at the same time the dream and the thoughts about that uh, I was like in and out of different a thought and a dream at the same time in bizarro land. But anyway, might be because of this, uh, these new supplements I'm taking. You, if you want to sleep like a baby, uh, look into taurin, look into uh, NAC, vitamin C, and the B, B complex. Anyway, back to what I was saying. No man careth for my soul. Now this is real. This is not a dream. This is real. I lived it. And maybe that's why I was thinking about the first girl I was ever serious with. What I thought was serious, but I was in a dream. I, I wasn't saved. And uh, <clears throat> no man careth for my soul, right? That was the name of the sermon. He was, and, and, I, and I started thinking about that's so true you know the people who care about your soul is people you never met usually Charles Stanley preachers online uh, some book you might read some sermon but the most people around you don't there's really no concern about your soul not only do they not care about your soul they're trying to destroy it my whole life growing up no parent no mom, no dad, no aunt, no uncle, no neighbor. Nobody told me about Jesus and how to be saved. Nobody cared about my soul. Actually, they tried to they tried to destroy my soul, a lot of them. They tried to pull you into uh, friends and uh, college. I remember college friends, after I got saved, I talked to one of them. Yeah, I'm saved. Well, wait a minute. I was in college. I, you, all, all you want to do is pull people into drinking. Why didn't you tell me how to be saved, man? Why didn't you tell me how to be saved? If you were saved, it makes no sense. I don't think they were saved. I think they just went to church. But my point is, not only do they not 
care for your soul. They're trying to destroy your soul. The school system is trying to destroy your soul. The political system. The corporate system. I've had 120 jobs my whole life because I've always worked two or three jobs in summer when I work my way through summer, a different job every time. They can't talk about winning souls on the on the job because it's against the corporate policies. You can't talk about uh, politics or religion or you'll get destroyed by the system. Churches, you might go to a local church, hear some good news, but then they try to put you back under legalism. Wait a minute. You want me to be free and then you won't put me back under legalism? That's kind of, that's the book of Galatians right there. You go online. People attack your soul instead of trying to win your soul if they think you're lost. But knowing that you're not lost, they have to attack your soul. Why would they attack your soul? Because they want to destroy you. I remember when God showed me the code. Uh... Some of the esoteric people showed up on the scene, and they tried to uh, tried to pull me into the dark side. And I laughed because I knew I was sealed by the Holy Spirit, and I knew that I had. They didn't know how much Bible I knew, and so everything they were saying, even what they were doing, was no different than the Pharisees who went to John the Baptist. Who are you? He's. Who are you? They went to Elijah. Who are you? They went to all the prophets. Who are you? Are you a... Uh, who are you? Because they were looking for the... The precursor and, and the Messiah to try to take the Messiah out. Who are you? I'm just... I'm one crying in the wilderness. They told him... They were just pointing to the, to the true one. So you go online and you start to decode and you start to speak some truth nobody's ever heard. Who are you? They did that to me. God showed me the code. I started showing how the blood, the red points back to the blood. The blue points back to the law. Green is the go green crowd. The letters, the alphabet, everything points to Jesus. Who are you? They all showed up. And they couldn't, they couldn't cause me to stumble, so they had to make up stuff. They had to lie about me. Why? Because they want to destroy my soul, which they can't because I'm sealed until the day of redemption. And when you start to talk, when you go online and start talking about Faith Alone channel, I posted a uh, video yesterday about Faith Alone and all these other, or yesterday or day before or sometime, and all these other videos popped up. Faith plus works, faith plus works, faith alone uh, is a lie. So every time you post something, of truth that is faith alone in the finished work of Jesus, they post, that's not the truth. Why? Because they hate your soul. They hated my soul. Anyway, my first girlfriend, serious girlfriend, she didn't care about my soul. First wife, she didn't care about my soul. Second wife, she didn't care about my soul. Every woman I've ever dated, they didn't care about my soul. They cared about, all they cared about was they want a baby, they want a house, they want to get pregnant, they want to uh, get some some kind of baby daddy so they could run the streets and do whatever and not be held, held accountable. Even though you care about their souls, they didn't care about your soul. You try to hold them accountable to push them higher to the next level and they hate your soul. They hate your truth. Try to steal your house, try to put you in jail, try to kill you. I mean, seriously, they hate your soul. If they hate your body and they hate your, they don't respect your, they don't want to do their duty and, and respect the union, you know they hate your soul because they don't respect the union. All they care about is themselves. Me, 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 me. I hate to tell you, but the Gentile women are corrupt. I ain't found, I mean, there's a few online I've talked to that seem to be legit, but for the most part, when I'm rubbing shoulders out here, going to the restaurant, rubbing shoulders, they're all corrupt. They don't even have an inkling of any kind of truth. And if you have no truth, you're a brute beast. 
most of the Gentile women are just brute beasts. It's all about me. And they're, and they're, why do you think social media grew? The guy always got some sideline going on. And I'm sure the women say that about the men. I'm sure they say the men are brute beasts. And that's why they are. That's, I already know what they're going to say. That we're, the men are brute beasts. That's why we are. We're just following the man. Yeah, but when a man really cares about your soul, why do you still act like a brute beast? Anyways, because the system, and it's a system of hiding the truth. The system is hiding the truth. And it's across the board. The system is hiding the truth. And I'll probably try to, I'll probably figure out oh, why I had those concurrent things happening. I was like in a dream state, and then I was waking, thinking about this. No man careth for my soul. The guy had a sermon down there in a, uh, White Lake, Whiteville, North Carolina, White Lake, and uh, I went and listened to him, and uh, I'll never forget the title of that sermon, No Man Careth for My Soul, So, but Jesus does. I want to I stress that before I cut this off. Even if no man cares for your soul, even if the ones who really do care for your soul, you might not ever meet them, uh, Maybe that's why I was having that, because uh, that verse. Oh yeah, I remember. I talked to her years later on the phone, and she said I was telling her my belief. She said, "So you're a fundamentalist?" Yeah, I'm a fu yeah. The fundamentals of the faith. What are you talking about, woman? Back then, I was probably a legalist, but yeah, yeah, I'm a fundamentalist. I believe the fundamentals. <laughs> but uh, maybe that's why, because. She didn't care about my soul. It's like, I guess it created a pattern. I don't know. But you can, you can go to Walmart, you can go anywhere. I mean, think about it yesterday. On, on Juneteenth, yesterday, in this city, we had some people hijack two postal workers, and they were doing it in Charlotte, too to steal stuff, steal from the postal workers. And this is what I'm talking about. You tell them, hey, you're free, but they still want to act like a slave. Yeah, you're free, but they still want to be like a slave and not you. They don't understand that freedom comes with responsibility. And you tell people, Jesus saves you, you can be free, but they still want to go back under legalism. I mean, I got to talk about this again, but You're in a system where nobody cares for your soul, except for you might hear some voices crying out in the wilderness. And so don't let it discourage you because ultimately Jesus does care for your soul. And those voices out in the wilderness, He lets you hear for a reason, you know. Faith alone and Jesus alone. Eternal life, not temporary life, eternal. <laughs>